they called it a home. So Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he woke up for a fajr, he wanted to wake up Ali ibn Abi Talib and Fatima to pray. So he knocks on the door and say, wake up, it's time to pray. So they say in the ayah, in the Quran, that when we sleep, we are dead, and then Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala return our soul to us to wake up. So they told him, Ya Rasulullah, our soul is in the hand of Allah. If he wants us to wake up, we will wake up. So SubhanAllah, just like all of us will do. So he claps his hand and say, Mankind discusses and argue everything. So they brought him from the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the soul when you fall asleep and gives it back. And if we if he wanted us to pray, he would give us back our soul. So this is one example of Kan Sad Asr Shay in Jadala. Another example in the day of judgment, as we know our hand and our legs and our skin will testify against us. And in sad we like to argue. So we will argue with them, saying, why do you testify? You put us all in trouble now. So here again, uh, they tell him uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered, and they say, وَكَانَ إِنْسَانُ أَكْسَرْ شَيْءٍ جَدَلًا Even in the day of judgment, we argue. And another example in the day of judgment that we hear from a hadith, the last man who goes to heaven. After everybody gone to heaven, this man is outside, and he looks at heaven. And he, you know, first, before he goes to Al Jannah, he sees a tree and he asks, Ya Allah, if only I could go under this tree, not in Al Jannah, outside Al Jannah, just go in a tree for the shade. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants him. And after he goes under the tree for the shade, he looks at Al Jannah, how beautiful it is. Ya Allah, if I could only enter Al Jannah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants his request. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants his request, he tells, uh, he looks, and it seems to him that Al-Jannah is full. He says, Ya Allah, it's full. There is no place for me in Al-Jannah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, if I give you uh, the, like the biggest king had on earth, would you accept? He says, yes, Ya Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, no. So again, it's, we always want more. We always like to argue and discuss and want more. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and give us more, inshaAllah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when this man looked in al Jannah and seen it full, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Isra, قُلْ لَوْ أَنْتُمْ تَمْلُكُونَ خَزَاءَنَا تَرَحْمَةَ رَبِّي إِذَا لَا أَمْسَكْتُمْ خَشَّةِ الْإِنْفَاقِ وَكَانَ إِنْسَانُ قَتُورًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you had the keys to the mercy of Allah, you would not spend. Why? Because you would fear poverty. وَكَانَ الْإِنْسَانُ قَتُورًا the mankind is grudging and the miser. If we had all the money in the world, we would hold back. And here, they, uh, uh, like uh, Sheikh Omar Abu Kafi says, and this example where he's seen Al Jannah full, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him more. And uh, again, us as human, if we go to Al Jannah, we we'll say there's no room for somebody, nobody else. And as we said before, when somebody comes and tells us, I want to immigrate, we tell him, no, there is no more place for anybody else. There is no jobs, there is no things. وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ قَطُورًا Our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, if one of you has as much gold as the mountain of Uhud, he'd want another one. This is how. And yet, do we spend for the sake of Allah? And do we give for the sake of Allah? So this is our nature. الْإِنسَانُ قَطُورًا It's all of us. We don't, we are afraid to spend because we might get poor. So what, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran to get over this? إِنَّ الْمُصَدِّقِينَ وَالْمُصَدِّقَاتُ وَأَفْرَدُ اللَّهُ قَرْدًا حَسَنِ يُضَعَفْ لَهُمْ If you give, you'll get it back more. If you give one, you get back ten. Because by nature we are khatur, we don't want to spend. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, don't worry, don't worry about giving because you'll get uh, more. Same as in the Quran when it says, some people are afraid to have children because of risk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُكُمْ وَإِيَّا so we provide for you and provide for them. So it's very important to understand. So it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah understands how we feel and tell us more. And Allah also says, Man Allah hasan Who lends Allah some money? So he gives it back. And the scholar tells us that on the scroll of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is written, Al Hasna to Bashar and Saliha, when you do one good deed, you get ten times. But if you lend, you get eighteen times. So the, if you give a charity one dollar, you get it eighteen dollars. If you lend one dollar for the sake of Allah, you get it back eighteen dollars. And the scholar explains this: when you give the dollar, you're detached from it; it's gone. 
But when you lend somebody money, and when you see him in your mind, is he going to pay back? You're attached to that one dollar. You're attached to that money. So that's why there is much more sawab for lending than just giving it for the sake of Allah. So if you lend somebody for the sake of Allah a dollar, you get it back 18 times, inshaAllah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إن عرضنا الأمانة على السماوات والأرض والجبال فأبينا نحمل النهى وأشفقنا منها الله سبحانه وتعالى أفر الأمانة trust to السماوات والأرض heaven and earth and the mountains فأبينا نحمل النهى وأشفقنا منها they said no يا الله we cannot and some of people say this trust is a choice the choice that you can make a choice rather than everything worship Allah except mankind they were given a choice you either believe or you disbelieve so here the amana is the trust and the choice. فَحَمَلَهَا الْإِنسَانِ إِنَّهُ كَانَ ظَلُومًا جَهُولًا The humans said, yes, I am Ya Allah, I will carry it. Because if we remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought us from the back of Adam. That we brought, He brought us all from the back of Adam and we all stood in front of Allah before we, were, uh, we came to earth. And He asked us, who do you worship? And we said, we worship you, Ya Allah. And then it says, we came to earth and we forgot. Some of the Sahaba, one of the Sahaba says, I remember this moment when I was in front of Allah and he asked us, who do we worship? And I said, you, Ya Allah. So in Sam, Zaroom and Jahul, when we were asked, do you want a choice? We accepted. Good will and good intentions. But we realized how hard and how difficult this, uh, this is. And here we remember Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Al-Isra Al-Mi'raj where he tells us he's seen a man carrying a big load on his back. And then he's seen something else and he's bending down to put it. He could barely carry the load on his back and he's bending to carry. So he says, who is this Ya Gibril? What is this man? He can barely carry and he could not carry what's on his back and he wants to pick up more. He said, these are people that they have responsibilities and they cannot fulfill and yet they accept more responsibility. And we have to look at ourselves and say, how many times were we busy and somebody asked us to do something and we said yes. And then when it came time to fulfill, you say, sorry, I was busy. So here we cannot. We have to say, I am busy. But if we accept, we have to fulfill. Or if it's in, at work and you accept the responsibility rather than say, I didn't do the rest because you asked me to do this, you ask to for priority. Now I have this and I have to do this. Which one would you like to do? But for us, the room and Jahul, we accept more and more and then we don't fulfill. So this is the trust and amana that heaven and earth ashfaqna minha. They felt sorry and said, no, ya Allah, we cannot. Even the mountains said no. And yet the insan, us as humans, and that's a characteristic of us. We have to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing ourselves. So we understand ourselves and we improve in inshallah. And also here as we see in Surah Al-Kahf, وَقَيْفَ تَصْبِرُ عَلَى مَا لَمْ تُحْرِ بِهُ خُبْرًا Where Musa alayhi salam told Al-Khidr, I will follow you and I'll be patient. So he tells him, how could you be patient of things you don't understand? And yet Musa was persistent, don't worry, I will be patient. We're all the same. But when he came to see the wonders, he couldn't be patient and he said, why do you do this? So here again, it's all of us, we accept the responsibility, we think more of ourselves, and then when it's time to fulfill, we cannot fulfill. So we have to watch what we say. Rather than rush and say, yes, I will do it, take your time, understand and reflect, and then apologize or uh, give them a better expectation, inshallah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ خَرَقْنَا الْإِنسَانُ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have created man, I've created humans, and I know what goes inside. Whatever thoughts we have, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows these thoughts. And that's where we have to watch. And that's where some of the scholars say, when you have a thought, a bad thought, you say, astaghfirullah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows these thoughts that's going inside you. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَهُ Your reward is what you've done. So here, rather than just amdil insani ma tamanna, it's not by wishing, wishing things and wishing good things like all of us wish things. And the thing is, we get rewarded for our work and our actions and our deeds. And laysa al insani illa ma sa'a, what we get rewarded for is the good deeds and actions. And unfortunately, sadly, most of us as Muslims today, we have a lot of nice words. When you ask our people to act, we're all busy, we're all whatever. We are only rewarded for our work and our deeds.